Welcome to Dream League Season 5. We're here for the last day already of League Play and we have some deciding matches coming up for you. We're starting off with Na'Vi taking on Vega Squadron, followed by Virtus Pro taking on Team Spirit. And we had a bit of a, a shuffle in, in uh, personalities here on the chairs. Uh, next to me, we have Andy. Thank you for sitting or daring to sit so close to me after uh, oh. Slax is oh, gone. And also to dare sit on the chair cake. that Slax has actually destroyed. Literally literally ripped the thing off. Like yeah. There's a little part right here that's supposed to have like a leather strap going back. Well, the leather strap is here. He, he mangled that. That is impressive. <laughs> I don't even like still. Like how but do you just... It was when the helicopter was going to attack him. You're like, I, mean, I know go when. Go I know when it happened. But how? I was just like... It's the how. He's so strong. <laughs> he's... He, he's, he's got, got that big terrified yeah, strength. You know what I mean? Slax is tall, man. Like he's scared. Panic mode. Your body's yeah. like, I need to defend myself Panic in this helicopter. Mode, adrenaline, helicopter like this big, definitely going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> need to destroy the chair. And Slax is uh, <laughs> not known for being particularly like low strung to begin with. You know? yeah, he's sure. always like, yeah. That's true. On the knife we also still have uh, LD on the chair they, together. You with can't the get rid of me. I just, cannot get I just rid of you. keep on showing up. I don't they know haven't what you figured did out. Slacks. They haven't changed the locks or the code yet, you know? <laughs> By the way, I what want to point out, I think this is like the, the panel with the least hair that we've had yet, so we're... I like to think it's an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. I think it is too. Yeah. I think yeah. we did one once with Ted, that pizza. Yeah, that. but that was a while ago. Yeah, was like, that's was old school. Ago. My hair is like longer that. than it was then, so I'll make up for that. I mean, the, the fact is you have more hair than the rest of us All combined. three of us combined. Easy. So yes. you are pretty much the hair on the panel. And, She's and got a monopoly Jake, on hair right now. You know, Jake's not doing so well up here either. But, yeah. but he's so from tall. The that you, you can't see. see. Yeah, 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 that's actually true. I didn't know he was going bald until he sat down like in front of me. And I was yeah, like, I didn't either. Yeah. I was like, wow, you actually sound so great. No, I don't feel so alone. <laughs> Welcome, brother. Yeah. Just shave him one day while he's sleeping. I told him he's going to have to embrace it eventually. Like, you're going to just realize it ain't coming back. Like, it's, just let it go. It's awful, though. You're like, uh, I did like my hair. awful, though? I didn't care. But I didn't care either. He knows. I don't think he's too, like, ashamed of it or embarrassed of it. And, no, he's not. You know, he's not deluded he's not, into thinking he's not it's going to... pulling the hat strap. Dude, if I had a little yeah. bit of the hair, hat strap. I, I, I just <laughs> let that shit grow as well. You know what I mean? You got to embrace it while you have it. I mean, I ha like, a little bit grows in here. You could go with the mohawk. Yeah, it's a little... You could pop it's, here and You there. get like the mountains up here and then the valley, right? Yeah. It's kind of weird. So I, when it starts growing in, it. it just looks ridiculous. So I'm like, why bother? You gotta embrace your inner Heisenberg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. So it's already the last day of league play, last day for, for all of us guys here. Hey, how do you enjoy Sweden? Mostly LD, because he, you haven't Sweden been to Sweden is great, uh, but before. But very expensive. Yes. That is we got a bar. Yeah. We, went, we went out to the bar last night. Very nice, classy place. You know, the people were lovely. Yeah, Good. they're like, the ambiance was excellent. This bar was like pretty much full, and then a lot of people, like pretty much the whole bar, just the moved. The whole bar moved yeah, up just so, so we had that space. we could sit. That it was, was so actually nice. really yeah, they amazing. Had booths, and the people who were there were kind of in the middle of the booth, so you, there wasn't enough room on the left or the right for our whole group because we had a large group. But Sweden, they're so polite. Like we got like twenty people just like they all slid down for us. But this is the yeah. thing that you have to understand about Sweden is they they move, but on the inside they, they were cursing you. Yes, like they will throw darts at a voodoo I doll of you when they go Swedish home. I live with Swedish people. That is how they operate. Okay, so they're like, also we're angry, but we're not going to say anything. So which one is it? Is it Scriff? Is it weapon? No, oh, it's always Scriff. It's always Scriff. He's always. a rager. Yeah. Wow. The funniest is I've seen him when he plays mafia. He gets when you get onto the bus in Sweden, <laughs> everyone like sits on the outside seat, so no one can sit on the inside. It's like <laughs> no, that's, and like they just stare at you down as you're coming. Yeah. It's like don't you dare look at my seat. No one wants to be the first one to budge because like yeah. when you're that first person that's gonna like someone's gonna have to go on an inside seat. It's like they all know it, but it's like all right, it's not gonna be me. You know? yeah, but then as soon as one person moves, everyone feels like, oh, well, that guy moves. So now if I don't move, I'm just a jerk. And then you have the bag strut as well. The bag's the bag here. strut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the bag's here, that so actually I can't works. move. That, that yeah. one works. It's, tough. it's very yeah. valuable yeah. stuff in here, you know, Mike. We go to, like, the grocery store. I intentionally buy way too much crap. Just put it in one seat so no one sits next to me. I just lug around, I just lug around a bag of random junk that I find, like, at all, all times. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's even better if it's trash. Because just then, collecting then it the smells, <laughs> and then nobody wants to. That's the real strat. When you have to go on public transport, just, just don't shower for a couple days, and that yeah. way, like, you guaranteed empty seat next to you. I have actually sat <laughs> next to someone before Stop who went to sit next advice. to me because I was already sitting there, <laughs> and he did that strat. But it doesn't work if you're the second one to sit down. Oh, it's too late. I couldn't move out because That's I was just on the poor inner planning. seat. I oh, was in the boy. inner seat because, you know, I was polite moving Imagine over. you just, like, wasn't great. So you gotta be got rude, out of the Shiver. chair and then move to, like, this, the row in front, and you're just like, just sit down again. <laughs> <laughs> that actually happens. If there's four people sitting in like a, a four seater mm -hmm. and there's one four seater open and like, you know, there's a stop so some people get out and there's one all of a sudden empty, people actually do get up from one and then move to the empty And then one. all the other three people are just like, not me, guys. <laughs> yeah. 
It happens. It happens. But it's been fun. It has been fun. Despite the the bill at the bar, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the, the whiskey and coke was good. I mean, people Trots paid for most of it. Like, yeah, I, I've been here for a long time, right? And as, an, as a fellow American, people always ask me, it's like, what is the difference? And honestly, it's not that much different from living in the U.S. It's like from a day-to-day basis. It's really the, not. The only thing that I miss is like fast food places that we don't have here. In obviously, Burger, like Taco Bell, In-N-Out, Chick-fil-A. stuff like that. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, yeah. But the other thing is... Stuff closes super early, and yeah. I guess you haven't really been here super long, so no. you know it's like 8 p.m. and everything's closed, and you're just like, God, I want to go get food, but nothing's open. That's yeah. the only other yeah, part yeah, about all... Sweden that's that and, different. Uh, the I, think, food. I think James was last night was different. he was calling it the retirement home of Europe. It is. Everyone <laughs> like wakes Sweden up. is the retirement. Uh, home. They wake up at like sense. 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. they get off work and they just go home instantly asleep. Just yeah. get well, home. Fairness, the sun mode. is up at like 4 a.m. So like if you're just going depending pure... on the time of year. Yeah, but if you're basing it purely off the sun. That means that you don't sleep when it's when it's summer. I well, guess. I think the longest stays is like <laughs> sure. eighteen to nineteen hours of sunlight here, at yeah. least. As the farther yeah. north you go, it gets worse, obviously. Yeah. But. Or better, depending on your point of view. Yeah, I mean, I prefer sun like. Well, hours if it's a the day. retirement home, home of Europe, the, all the rich people won't stay in Sweden in the winter. They just move to a sunny place. They migrate. Me and yeah. Daniel actually walked to the store once. I had like a wristwatch, and it said five on it. So I was like, let's walk to the store. It said it's Daniel. Both of us like just play games all day. Uh, we get to the store, everything's closed. Turns out it was 5 a.m. We just didn't know because the sleeping pattern was so <laughs> The screwed. sun was there. We're, <laughs> we're like, like, oh, we're good. Yeah, yeah it must be the day. It's bright out. Like, yeah, yeah I'm top of the morning. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> That's actually pretty bad. It was awful. I don't think I've ever done that before. It's, you know, there's this thing called a, a watch or a yeah, clock. Yeah, very I handy. A watch, but it, yeah. it wasn't digital. Did it make sense? It uh, was like a, yeah, it wasn't it was a digital one, so it didn't say AM or PM. It was it just literally just five. two hands. Yeah. Okay. So he's like, ah, it's five. I must be able to, nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. No, 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 not good. That's when you really know you've lost your sense of time. Pot of yeah. exile. It took control. Well, that's the thing as a gamer, right? You just have your blinds closed all yeah, the time. Yeah. Or, you know, depending on where the PC set up in your room, because I can't have my blinds open. Otherwise, I just get the blinded. Glare. Yeah, and it's the glare the is unbelievable. So. so let's talk uh, Dota for a little bit, because... It seems that a lot of people were expecting the patch on Tuesday and it didn't happen. Uh, at least not as big of a patch as everybody is hoping for. Are we still expecting a patch at this point? Yes. Yeah. After Come ESL on. Manila. The thing Small is, there's tweaks, there, probably. somebody's going to get screwed, <laughs> right? I hope it's Because today. there are so many tournaments that there has to be, like in my opinion, there has to be some kind of content change before yeah. the next major or TI. Certainly before. Okay. Well, the thing is like, You'd think like at, certainly at least before TI, because otherwise it's three events over yeah. like a nine month stretch with the same patch. But if you wait until right before TI, then no one has a chance to practice. Either, I, I wouldn't so. be yeah. like super disappointed with just a few slight nerfs. I wouldn't either, because no. I, I think that this patch has shown that if it's because we're much better as Dota players than we used to be even a couple of years ago. People understand the game so much more. People are adapting. They're not running the same strategies. There's so many different styles that you can play. It's not just one strategy beats everything else anymore. You know, we're back to the rock, paper, scissors of like TI3, TI2. But back then, it wasn't even that sure Alliance had the meta figured out very well. But people were still so much worse yeah. that we just didn't know how to deal with a lot of the stuff that they were doing. But nowadays, it's like we have options. We know we can adjust. We can, you know, change up our strategy. And when we look at draft as well, it's more like what is this team going to pick rather than what is anyone going to pick? Like, we yeah. see, like, Navi picking Lycan. No one else really runs Lycan. Yeah, or, you know, or the or Major with MVP, yeah, where they're exactly. just running the PL mid, the Juggernaut mid, like, totally different style of it's, play. It's all to do with the team and what, they, yeah. what the players But it works like. for them. Yeah, exactly. And that's way more interesting than, oh, my God, they first picked Morphling, we lost. Or, like, <laughs> remember, first like... First pick Morphling. Ne- like or TI2. burning on anti yeah, yeah, Oh, God, GG. TI2, you know? and it's like, oh, my God, there's Darkseer and Nagasaur. That hero is actually criminally underpicked, in my opinion. Dark Dark Morphling? Here? No, Morph- Morphling, sorry. Yeah, Morphling. Oh. Morphling is actually, like, insane. Do you but like him as a carry or as a the, 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 the position three? Okay. It, the games um, are too fast for can. Morphling right now, right? Actually, people underestimate how much the hero can do in the, in the early game scenario, because this is the thing, right? Because they changed... Um, they changed Morph to be 16 stats a second instead of 8, so it like doubles your effective survivability. <clears throat> also against a lot of burst lineups now, you can actually sit on a lower threshold of HP yeah. because the Morph is actually faster. It, it goes mm-hmm. So you auto-attack for like 150 damage at level 9 with like Aquila and Treads. And sure, if they go on you, you just Morph and you can like bait them out. You have an escape mechanism. You have very low downtime because you have Replicate. You can abuse Bottle. Like there's so many things about that hero that are strong right now. And AA is non-existent well, in I, the meta. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or Elder Titan also. Elder Titan, yeah, two of the natural not counters a hero to the right hero. Now. No one plays it. Yeah. I mean, if Morphling comes back, those heroes will probably creep back in. Yes, Definitely. of course. Yeah. But I, I just think that right now, like the prevalence of Spectre and Fury and all these other heroes, 
you know, Furion in lane still might be a little bit of a nuisance for a Morphling, but I still think you can leave him alone. You can rotate supports. Like, he's self sufficient. You, you can't really gank a Morphling. What do you, yeah, what do you build support. on him? Because, like, every time I see Morphling picks, it's like always that, like, very typical, like, Tread, Zakila, and then into a Lincoln Sphere. Like, pretty much every game. But he feels really underwhelming with the Lincoln You can do up. Lincolns, or you can do, like, a early Helm of the Dominator if you're dire, because you can solo uh, Roshan Mir very easily with Miracle that hero. Does that, I think. Yeah, you can, you can solo Rosh. You can go for, like, the Manta style, even. You don't have to rush E Blade. Uh, I think that Lincoln's is still okay a lot of the time, but it's very dependent on the pace of the game. I've seen it, like, I, I'm trying to remember who it is, but there was a couple of the Chinese teams running it, and they would just, like, every game, no matter what, like, always Lincoln's, even in games where it didn't really make sense, so. It's just so valued because the hero, his only downside is if you if you buy Aquila and Wand, which I think you should almost always have, you don't really have room for Bottle 2, because yeah. then you have, like, five inventory slots yeah, So you need more dedicated. super light yeah. inventory yeah, slots. Yeah, so it's either you, like, buy Wand or you buy Bottle, and sometimes I even think it might be worth skipping Aquila, even though the item's super value, just because you can abuse replicates so much. Yeah. I believe it's, it's played a lot in pubs, I believe Scandal, for example, spammed that hero in his pub. And Illidan. And Illidan. And Illidan. Maybe yeah. Oh yeah, Illidan. 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 So that was ridiculous. I watched you know, so many of them. They do before. know it's good. Yeah. It's right? mega good. Yeah, I, I think it's just, again, like they were saying, the pace of the game. He's not amazing against push strat. Mm -hmm. So like against a team like Na'Vi, who have a, you know, Chen and Chantress that they pick every single game, it might not be as good. But heck, even against heroes like Batrider and stuff in lane that, you know, Na'Vi do love to pick, yeah. it's actually fine. It's, yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah, it, laning stage-wise, I think it actually fits well against those teams because it, yeah. it deals with the roam. It's pretty difficult to kill. It doesn't need as much help as you know some of the other laners, but it's more like can he combat the very heavy I five think, man? I think he's not even too bad. If he gets a good start, you just get rush the e blade and then you just kill a support instantly. Like you have a lot of witch doctors, chains, all these heroes. They just yeah. blow up. So which event is, uh, is gonna get uh, shafted here? Because well, he is someone else this weekend. We play finals weekend after. Open qualifiers and regional qualifiers the week or during the week yeah. itself. Then you got Epicenter the weekend after two weekends after actually. Then you got the Dream Hack finals, or Dream League finals the week after that, and after that you got the <laughs> major. So is there even a week off after no. Dream League putting into the major? So there's literally um, there's the well there's the whole week off as in I but not the next weekend. Obviously yeah. we don't yeah. know the dates in terms of when the group stages start for the Manila major. Uh, you would expect at least seven or eight days free. I think it pretty much has free. to be after ESL Manila <coughs> because yeah. otherwise if you do it the weekend after that you're not giving teams any time to prepare mm. going into the qualifiers. Mm. So um, uh, you know the other thing that I would like to or see you want is the qualifiers on the on the old patch. Yeah, or you just don't have a patch at all. That's the other possibility. Or that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the other thing that I would like to see is like a lot of small tweaks because what, like, what we've noticed over the past couple of years is if you if you like buff a hero, even if it's really not that much, like it kind of reminds players that that hero yeah, exists, yeah. And they'll experiment with it, and like all of a sudden it's like, like the whole you know juggernaut uh, sniper troll patch, like they just got like little buffs here and there. The items got a little bit stronger. All of a sudden, everyone's picking them. The yeah. heroes are maybe too strong, but. Well, definitely weren't too strong at the time. Yeah. It's also that, that very was scary, like, though. That's like a good way to kind of creep heroes back into the game and, and make That was multiple up. patches, though. They both sniper like five patches yeah. in a row. But there's a lot of heroes that, you know, like there's always that hero that's slowly getting buffed, slowly getting buffed, yeah. getting ignored, and then all of a sudden, bam. But this wrecked. is a good That's patch. what happened with Morphling. What if there's like two minor patches before TI, and then some of the heroes get slowly, slowly buffed, and then you've got a TI finals because some people or some heroes got buffed so much that they are turning into the new troll slash sniper? I, I think it's one of those things where you give a hero like, you know, the Ice Frog patented one base armor or whatever, something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, please pick me. And sometimes teams just, they don't have the time to practice. We yeah. talk about how many tournaments there are nowadays. There's so many, like what, there's like five within like a month yeah. of each other or within that one month. I mean, sometimes you look at those match tickers, there's like 40 matches and yeah. that's just on the ticker, not yeah. even counting tournaments that aren't listed there. That's really, I think, the bigger issue for a lot of teams, that's especially. When, that's when Navi will win though. Because they have and Navi is playing all of those matches. <laughs> every hero doesn't matter. Yeah. But the the funny thing about Navi right now is that they actually like do the same thing every single game. But they're yeah. just so good at it that it just doesn't matter. And I, I think that's it's one of those teams that has done the same thing that they're so used to. And they were talking about how like you know playing Shen and Enchantress is like riding a bike. You yeah. just you never, never really forget, forget how to do it. So you know, art style has always been very good on those heroes, and now it's just it's a it seems to be a Navi patch for this now. This is his time. This yeah. is their time. They're, they they're doing an better patch. and better as well. They, yesterday, they beat uh, Virtus Pro 2-0. Before that, the games they played actually was somewhat even, or at least Virtus Pro was able to take a game off them. But, for example, today, they played again 3-0. 3-0 yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Navi looks it? scary, and they're doing it with some interesting, like, different picks as well. We saw Who's the we saw the Wagamama faceless void oh, build today yeah. for Ditya Ra. He went for the early uh, Vanguard into Radiance. Mm -hmm. You eventually get the Manta style. You're basically farming all over the map. You're impossible to kill. Butterfly AC, I think, was the way he finished it I, off. I honestly like think that, that, that build is so broken. That, that build is really underrated, <laughs> I think. No, he, no I, he's I, super good. Uh, the build I, is very good, obviously, but the hero, I think, is the problem. Yeah, definitely. Because it's like you have the six second cooldown time lapse. You build one item to give you because some for, survivability. 40 mana, Andy. Yeah, at 40 mana, because mm -hmm. why not? And then you have time dilation, mm -hmm. which pretty much turns off your character for 20 seconds or it's 18, like 50 whatever mana, it is. I believe. Yeah, also very low yeah. mana costs. Mm -hmm. And it's like if they increase the mana cost of the hero, that would help a lot. But I think against a void, you need like either mana burn or you need ridiculous amounts of disable or you need an AA. Sustained damage is pretty good. Sustained damage is okay, but it's like if you don't kill him within a stun or you don't deal a, a huge amount of damage within a stun, yeah. you're not killing him. You also kind of need like Venge or something else to prevent Sky Spirit Rod, from being like an insta-kill. Silences are good against him. Yeah. Like, like maybe long, Disruptor. Long duration silences are good. But if yeah. you put him in the safe lane, absolutely cannot pressure him. Like yeah. you, you either have to go aggro or you need other heroes in the team that are just good against Void, yeah. which... I mean, of course, if you're playing the carry Void build, we almost never see the eggs in that build. Mm -hmm. And that's the big weakness is the ult has a long cooldown. So yeah, could play around it potentially, but... You know, super late game, maybe as a refresher in the stash. and As still position has a one, though, ult. like if you go the, the uh, Radiance Vanguard build, you actually don't need Sphere. Like if, if they don't have AA and they yeah. don't have a lot of lockdown, you actually just don't even need your ultimate because yeah. you just won't die. Yeah. Well, no, it's not about dying, I guess. It's like to some extent, maybe you can ignore the Void in fights because he doesn't have yeah, that's true. quite the mobility he Perhaps used to. Perhaps we will see Void today. We didn't see it yesterday. Uh, we can take a look at what we did see yesterday. Here's a recap of yesterday's games. Yoku's jumping in. Blade Fury onto Solo. They should buy back now from G. Ice Wall will be dropped, but Yoku waltzes over there with the magic community now. G popping the BKB, looking forward to moving for more Solo. Oh! He got the blink out! Solo escapes the good and will be there to finish off the Evoker, and that is him dead for a good two minutes. No buyback available on this man. Vega, they need to win this fight, but they've lost a second. Shoma falling as well in the vengeful spirit. They're gonna run straight bottom, yeah. yeah. They, they need to go. Mag can set up Aurora into a nice Echo Sam, but no, they'll send home onto him. Jumping in with the Hex, and Mag's gone. Does have a buyback available, will get himself straight in, and there's your Echo Snap, catching out G and No Fear. G pops the BKB FN, has he got the damage to deal enough against his own, and he might just, but no, G pops the G's, Laguna back onto FN, that's Jajara down, Mag as well on a die back on the Beastmaster, and this could be GG. The thing that's really hard is establishing vision. Reload here. Yeah, Goku. Stuck in the ice wall. False promise will be there. Find some time. Aloha Dance popped the fortunes and can they kill Seneca? That would be big if they can. I have fallen over now. The region keeping him up. They'll take him down. Seneca now gone. Deafening blast from Daddy flying through there onto two of them. It's going to be a mega kill streak for General. Now G jumping in the horn as well for Yoku. They'll find themselves to the kill onto Dendi. Therefore gets dropped down. G's gone hostile. Still alive. And it is Shira. Avalanche onto FNG and Yoku. But it's a triple kill for Yoku. And Joku's actually going to survive here. Yoku might just do with a turnaround. He gets himself ultra kill on the Beastmaster G. General. Just finding the split push here on the top. What's the plan here for VP? They're going to try and jump in. Arstar getting double silenced up. G with a nice tornado onto two. But Dijara just goes in with a BKB and the ultimate form. FNG getting bursted down high by the Nature's Wrath. And oh, the right clicks from Dijara at this point. So much damage forcing them back. Yoku will just be able to get himself back to base. Dijara jumps on the cheese, but they're two down on the side of VP. The Shackle coming through, cancelling the Death Ward. Aloha Dots caught in place. Power shot to seal the deal. Double kill for Dendi. He looks towards Yoku. Dendi actually going to go down here, but He's got the ages. He will just win run himself away. Art style with the magic miss on FNG. The Ghost Scepter isn't going to save him against the spirits of Seneco. GG is called a Navi. The biggest thing yesterday about the games was uh, the results of Na'Vi basically securing them a place in the LAN Finals. And we can take a look at the standings and see where that leaves other teams. Uh, there is a lot of possibility still with these last two games, or last two series, guys. But let's just keep it simple and say our first series is Vega versus Na'Vi. Vega has to win and then they're through. There we go. We're not going to look at any other possibilities yet until it's actually if time for win, that. Yes. Because otherwise we're going to be talking about ifs and how and, and there's like maybe. 60 different rules. And there's loads of rules and you would not be able to understand what we were saying and you'd forget about it. But all you need to know, if Vega wins, they're through. They're through. They're going up against Na'Vi. 
it's it's a rough one. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Navi has been on a hot streak right now. So, but the other cool thing to note is that no diggity are pretty much through no matter what. Yes, yeah, also, they're already yes. they're guaranteed. Yeah. Navi and no diggity are the guarantee guaranteed two, and then you've got Spirit Vega and VP still showing today, of which Vega and Virtus Pro. Did I say Virtus Pro just now? Yeah, yep. VP. Yeah, uh, Vega and Virtus Pro are um, contending for contesting for the third so slot. So can Team Spirit they can go through too? In Tech theory, they can, yeah, they but can let's not go there. We are gonna leave we, that for the moment. I think we moment. were melting Shiver's mind a little bit yes. going through all the. The type yeah, scenario, so that, if yeah. this happens, this and this happens, because then that, no. Yeah, let's then, not, then Vegan needs to this. win, and they're through. Keep it simple. It's all good. So, if you want to catch any behind-the-scenes footage, uh, go follow us on Snapchat, DH Dream League. Same thing goes for Twitter, DH Dream League. And if you missed any of the games yesterday, or the weeks before, or red buttons, or pre-shows, anything, just go to youtube.com slash DH Dream League. So, with that out of the way, I want to hear from... LD and Andy, because we're going to send those two off to cast today, as we are obviously uh, not having Owen today. So LD will stand in for him. But I want to hear what you think about today's matches, because this is the last time you'll sit on this chat. <sighs> Navi just looks unstoppable right now. I mean, they, they were down in a couple of games against VP. Uh, so it's not like they dominate from minute zero until the end of the game every mm -hmm. time. But it's more just their, their team cohesion, their like execution, decision making, and the clutch. It's just It just seems to be on another level from the other team. So. I have to favor Navi pretty heavily. Duo? I think unless unless it's a horrible outdraft, I don't see Vega beating them. Uh, I, I, I think it's think... within the realm of possibility. It's just like if I was ever going to bet money on this game, I would not feel comfortable betting on Vega unless there's a ton of like like really good odds. Yeah, and, and the thing is too, it's like he was saying they play against each other so much that getting a super outdraft is very unlikely yep. because you have a really good idea of what each team is going to be running. And Navi are just relentless. Like yeah. I was watching the VP Navi games earlier for the, the long druid one. Well, I, I caught the second and part of the third game before we came here, and they're just like they're losing the entire game. Yeah, I thought but they, they were losing the third game. Definitely losing fighting. Yeah. They just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, and eventually they get like one or two good opportunities. You know, they time their fights well around Roshan, around yeah. objectives, and then they just come back and win. So I yeah, I, I think the first series is just going to be two on Avi. Okay, was uh, series two. We have Virtus Pro and Team Spirit. That one I would probably still favor VP. I could see it going one one though, honestly, because I think Team Spirit have the potential to pull something out, like draft wise. I think they're maybe like the they have like the X factor draft for them, but I still think VP is a stronger team. So actually, I'll say two of VP for that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think VP can pull it out. I think it will be, it will be two of VP. I, I think actually, like, even though, like, so if you look at it mathematically, Vega, the, they have to win less games overall. Like, the, there's more ways for Vega to get through because they have the one less loss coming yes. into the day. But uh, I actually think VP have the better shot because of who they have to play. So, yeah, I think it's much more likely that VP gets a 2-0 than... I think that's even more likely than Vega getting a 1-1, to be honest. I would agree with that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to let you two prepare for the upcoming series. Thank you for your contribution. And it is time to get another guest of the week. Ooh. Yes. we wanted more guests because more guests is better so this week we have in total three guests in the studio and uh, back once again ape mother what's up welcome back in the studio thank you and it's like the whole band's back together yeah, again we've done this many times in the, the three past. musketeers yes. i missed you dude you too man it's been a long time since i heard Bible you're um, getting smart <laughs> what <laughs> yeah i'm raising my intelligence how one day at a time yeah, over in Uppsala, I'm studying uh, a master's in electrical engineering. Oh, fun? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's very hard. Right, so one day at a time getting smarter. Yeah. That's the way. <laughs> Just study loads. What's the better time? So he actually said, <coughs> I'm becoming a better Dota player by not playing Dota and studying. Because yeah. he's... How? What? He looks at the game more strategically now. I'm more analytical and mm -hmm. like I'm growing synapses in my brain. Okay. So better helicopter view over all yeah. the, the strategic Definitely. developments in Dota 2. So analyze or the, the strategies of Vega and Navi. That's our first upcoming series. <laughs> go! Yeah, so <laughs> go. <laughs> we have two Russian teams. Yes. You know what that means, right? It's going to be a lot of aggressive like lineups and they're going to be fighting constantly. I was watching the games yesterday. Yeah. 
Was it for, was it 40 kills in 10 minutes yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. it was ridiculous. It was That's crazy. Like 10 minutes into the game, there's just 10 people in the middle lane just yeah. battling for like five minutes. It's like, who cares about creeps? It's Russian Dota. Yeah, it's awesome to watch. The game. Yeah, and it's like the core of the meta as yeah. well. So it fits them very, very well. So you're thinking the same thing will happen in the Vega Navi match? The, the fighting, the heavy kills? I think it's going to be fast paced. Okay. And it's going to be like decided in the first 15 minutes or so. 15 like minutes? coming out of the laning phase, it's going to mm -hmm. be a lot decided, but the exception is the Navi game like uh, that was played just now, when yeah. Navi turned the game at their base, which is kind of rare. I think the thing that Navi do well as well, they do the fighting amazingly, but yeah. they also draft in a way that allows them to take object objectives after. So exactly. I mean, they always get the towers after the fights, where in the games we saw yesterday, the teams against Navi just didn't really do that. Yeah, they didn't and a lot of teams them. right now seem to be picking up like the fighting heroes with yeah. The, like the element of push, so exactly. like Fury and like an Enigma, yeah. Drell like Ranger, yeah. still pretty good as Amazing. well. Amazing. So who do you favor here? Is it also Navi? Are we all on the Navi mm. hype train here? I think Navi is looking really, really strong, and I would be a fool not to put my eggs in their basket. Fair enough. You, you said something else during rehearsal. <laughs> just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just faking. <laughs> nah, it's understandable. Vega also. I don't, talk to me about Vega. What what's their strength? What what's the, what are they good at? Mm, they're really good at like playing around no one. If he has a good game, they yeah. get really good tempo. Like they just start rolling. When we saw them play yesterday, uh, FNG ganked quite heavily in the mm -hmm. mid lane, mm -hmm. and it like just completely shut them down. Like yeah. no one didn't really have any farm at all, and just they struggled because they don't have him as the core like leading them in the pushes. Exactly. But I talked to Yapsor about them, and he was saying that uh, Sima is like the hardest support to play against. Like, all of a sudden you just randomly place a sentry like four minutes into the game behind your tower and there's just a ward there. And you're like, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? Like, he, he's, he's just constantly like warding really Aggressive well. Aggr yeah. Aggressively yeah. as well. Like allowing for the aggression. So that kind of suits their play style very, very but well. But they're really, really similar in a way that Dendi also needs to have kind of yeah, a good yeah. game to be the tempo controller. And Dendi so has been getting a lot of support yeah. from his supports. I mean, that sounds a little so bit weird. So the game weird, is going to be like played yeah. around the middle lane. There's going to yeah. be a party in the middle yeah, lane. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. Five on five, better lane yeah. the lane, boys. Let's go. <laughs> So who's gonna you, you're feeling like whoever is coming out in the mid is gonna be winning the game? Is is that how much emphasis there is on that mid mm, lane? Kind of. It's gonna set the pace. So like you want to be the one controlling the tempo in this kind of meta. So if you do come out on top, there's a very high chance you're gonna win. I, I, I don't think, think that, like it's as clear cut as everyone said. I think if there is a team to beat Navi, like they're on they're on a ridiculous winning streak at the moment. But yeah. I think Vega definitely could be the team he's leave. Like they get Magus Beastmaster. You know, they get no one like Invoker. They, they do that kind of combination. And I don't know, the, the game's open from there, I think. I think Vega, looking at Vega, obviously you look at Mag and his Beastmaster. And mm -hmm. Beastmaster yesterday in the games as well, very important hero, very contested hero as well. I kind of feel like he's going to see, see it banned. But they can cheese a little bit. I feel like that's a, that's oh, a team that, that might yeah. be able to cheese Navi. And I think that's the way to beat them because I like, feel like everything you say that Ve Vega is good at mid lane. Uh, off lane. I mean, you've got General on the Batrider. Yeah. That's just yeah. a beast, and I would put That's him right. over Mac. I, you've got Dendi over No One, and even though I think No One is amazing, the supports that help, uh, the supports help Dendi more than I feel that No One's getting help from. Yes, he's getting help, but not as concentrated as Dendi gets it. So I feel like everything that we can say that Vega's good at, Navi just just a little, a little bit better. Bit better. Mm. Yeah, I think. Well, you, mm. you even talked about the cheese thing, I guess. Yeah. Well, like. I, Broodmother. Yeah, like just picking these kind of... I don't think it's like cheesy. I think it's kind of more smart, really. But yeah. I think Navi do the exact same thing. Like they pick these like Juggernaut with Magnus combinations. You know, they have the offlane Juggernaut. They also pick like all these... The, the tiny with the Invoker and the Beastmaster, you know, to buff up his attack speed with Alacrity and stuff. They have mm -hmm. the little kind of cheesy combos as yeah. well. Yeah, and I think that Vega could like set off the meta a little bit, like trying something new. Because the mana seems kind of stale right now with all the heroes. For the for Na well for Navi they haven't had basically their playstyle really contested yeah. right because they've been winning with just yeah. doing That's the same I mean. thing. So why so would they change? Like, yeah. Try scissors this time and you're gonna wreck the. Try to bag, void right. Is it void try time? Try scissors. I actually think for Vega. Maybe. When you have an invoker player like no one like having that chronosphere to set it up, it just gives you so much freedom in the game like. It, because the the thing you struggle with Invoker is lockdown, basically. Mm. If you can cast all your spells, mm. you know, you're good. And Void is the best hero for that. And it's just, we saw it earlier in today, and it was just unkillable. But that was for Navi. Yeah.
So they have to keep in mind that Navi might also pick it. How do you draft against Navi? They do like Potom, Everything they Potom do well. Curry. Like they picked Tiny yesterday. But they lost one. Potom, right? Nope, they no. won two they won games with Potom zero. last Monday. No. Out of the blue as well, Team at least. Coast, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I remember actually, the eight mama. <laughs> We're on all the time. Super strong, you stun, 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 and then you win. Yeah. What but it's, it's, in, it's insane lane control. Well, uh, the Mirana, when they picked the Mirana, yeah. they didn't really give any warning that there might be a Mirana, and even the game afterwards, they they made it believe that there wouldn't be a Mirana because at first they Ra played it, and then the game afterwards, Dendi was playing yep. Mirana. It's like, what's going on? Uh, we are, by the way, loading into the game. We were a little bit delayed by a delay of one of the players from the teams, but we should soon be into the draft. Now, looking at the draft, I mean, as you said, there's very little you can do to, to actually outdraft Navi or at least, you know, uh, like ban up their heroes. They have, so, they have such a wide hero pool. I think it, pretty much everyone just bans Chen and Enchantress. Like, yes. It seems to be like the stable way to mm -hmm. play against them, but it's not working for anyone. So try something else, you know what I mean? Like, you, like you, need, you need to, I think the Beastmaster, the Venge is their, their key hero. Like all mm -hmm. these games, they pick the Venge. It just gives them so much early game aggression. Having the save, you know, for these mid game team fights is yeah. huge. Like, especially when you're playing against a lot of Beastmaster, Batrider, Vengeful Spirit's the go-to hero. Like, you have Minus Armor, you have the, the push as well. So I think the Vengeful Spirit, maybe even... Like, f focus on winning your safe lane and your off lane more against Na'Vi, because Na Na'Vi are not going to let you win the mid lane. No. They're, they're, yeah. It's not happening. I really hope that we're going to see an Ursa this game, because I know that FN plays a really mean Ursa, yeah. and he might be the tool to dominate early game against Na'Vi. We're going to find out what's going to happen in the draft, though, because it is on the way, and we can find out <laughs> who is... Uh,